Hello, my ghouls and ghoulies, and welcome back once again to the channel. My name is Torian Blackley, your humble master of ceremonies, and today we are starting a new series in the channel called Penumbra Overture. Now, I played Penumbra for about half hour, I believe, ages ago. So, this will be blind, blind as, a, as it can be. Now, I understand this game came before. Four, I believe it's from the same company that did um, Amnesia. So, without further ado, let's give it a shot. So, for players who are bad at action games, recommended suit most players. For players wanting a real challenge, I think normal is for. The most balanced mode to play is enemies can take more damage and are faster. I think I'll just do normal as the game is intended. My story began in February year 2000. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it. So when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I've ever heard from him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and so the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever take. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realized my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day. And I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Finally, we are almost docked. I'd better, I'd better stow my gear. I may be far from home, but chances are I can still pick things up using left mouse and I can take a look, a closer look at, at things using the right mouse. All right. And certain this map's a good decade or so out of date, but landmarks don't change much in Greenland. So I've got a pretty decent idea of what I'm heading. A good scientist always keeps a pen and paper handy, just in case. Whiskey. Empty. Shame. <laughs> For shame, yes. So... Ah, okay. Take. The screw seemed friendly. The crew seemed friendly enough, but just in case, I locked up my valuables. I'm pretty sure the keys in my inventory somewhere. Once I found it, double clicking the left mouse button should get it selected. Then I can press and track on the padlock to unlock it. So I assume the inventory is 
Look at that, it's the tap. There's not much light in here. The flashlight could come in handy. We have a picture of a lady and a picture of maybe huskies. Right. Ah, some extra batteries to power my flashlight. Could come in handy if the torch runs out of batteries. I should be able to access it to access it through my inventory or with the shortcut key G. Wow, that was quick. Can I move? Is there any so how do we sneak? Okay. But how do we get back up? Sure. From the smell, I'd say there's an equal chance they use this chest for personal belongings or bait. Pretty sure I'm, yeah, sneaking. I <laughs> should have, have a quick look at the. Well, jumping doesn't. Fisherman's wife love letter. Dearest, dearest Eric. There's a quick note before you set sail and leave me once again. I've left you a little something to remember me by in the chest at the foot of your bed. I really don't know why you still only have one bed on board. Taking ships because of it is no way to get your rest. But what does a fisherman's wife know of life at sea? I'll be praying every night for you to make the catch you need so that you can come home to me safely and soon. Please, don't be gone for five weeks like, like last time. I know I might knock sometimes, but I do love you, you know. Of course, I've washed those overalls of yours. I know you'll get them covered in assorted fish parts in no time, but I still feel better knowing you've, you've, uh, they've had a wash. Before I forget, the Hemricksons in the village have asked me to see if you'll be coming by any trout, but I said they were mostly out of season. If you do happen upon any, don't say anything, stow them well in the ice, and I'll do something special with them to celebrate when you come home to me. The ship's captain deserves a little special treatment once in a while. Take care, my love. To do this, and we have our notes. So, all right, let's just a second. So, crouch left control and run left shift. There we go. I was pretty sure that I was already doing that before. Pretty odorous. Glad I'm getting out of here soon. They must eat and sleep and, well, do everything else in this room for weeks at a time. Got a couple more pictures. Move this. I thought that maybe <laughs> there would be something under it. Playboy poster. It's nice. Some things don't change no matter how far you are from home. Oh, flashlight, nice. Flashlight switches on and off via the inventory or, hopefully, with the shortcut key F. Lift, this might be my back. I can move it, but there's nothing under it. And I think this is pretty much everything that I could find in this room. Perhaps I can, can go out now. It leads out onto the deck, but I don't fancy braving the weather until I have to. Am I supposed to sleep then? Or look at the map again? I'm not sure. It's 
It's an old padlock, sure, but it still works. Good thing I remember to bring a flashlight. Not sure. There must be something else that I'm supposed to do. Otherwise, getting stuck in the, in the tutorial is... Doesn't seem to be anything there. Somewhere out there must be land and answers. Oh, there we go. Always good to have a notebook. To jot down interesting information and reminders. That should be everything I need. I want to get going before dark. As I stepped off the boat, setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utterly devoted I'd been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my orientation or my spirit first, but I lost feeling in my extremities soon after. I knew hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. So cold, don't know where I am. Need shelter soon. My entire head went numb a long time ago, but I can still hear the wind roaring past. And it's not some kind of animal in the, in the distance. Yeah, I'm really. What? What in the hell is that? I don't care. I need shelter. Looks frozen shut. Need something to break it in. Well, I saw some stones coming coming over. Maybe I can run. Because I'm not sure if I can die here. But if I click and hold, uh, okay. I should just about manage to pick up that rock. The colds make me weak, but I can still throw things using the... Right button, alright. So it is pretty much like a mission. If I use interrupt, oops. Alright. I hope to god it's not frozen inside as well. So weak. But if I just use interact mode, is it open now? It is. All right. What were those voices? Jesus, my head. I can't believe I fell that far and survived. Although, looking around, maybe I didn't. What is this place? The only source of light. Ah. I should have known that rusty old ladder wouldn't hold my weight, but I didn't have any choice. I'd rather die down here than suffer that cold any longer. So it looks like the, the yeah the ladder broke. Empty boxes of ammunition. What is this place? Heavy wooden looking barrel. Could be anything inside. Emergency exit procedures. Okay, I can't see. Oh yeah, they are definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use my. My light here, otherwise I'm not going to see anything. There's a... Oh, a flare. Steel rod. Can I... Okay, this is the... The... Power left. 
Now I'm hoping playing on normal I'll be able to find plenty of batteries because that's one thing in my initial playthrough I think I'll have to go back to normal because this is too punishing playing on hard if you don't know the game like me I don't know the game and don't find enough light let's see I can swing this hammer if I hold the left mouse I can make a back swing by pulling the mouse right and then follow through by pushing left the opposite works too pulling back and then thrusting forward but this is a stubby motion thrusting back and forward oh, okay I reckon if I hold down right mouse after this back swing I should still be able to look around Well, I have a hammer, so at least I have weapons. Okay. Well, I'm not sure how good I'm going to do with a hammer, but at least I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that I have some sort of weapon. But it looks like if I have the hammer, I can't move things about. All right. Well, that's good to know. Doesn't seem to be anything, anything else around here. It's stuck. There must be something in the way. There must be something in the way. Behind it. Well, can I use that rod? How's that going to work? All right, there must be something in the way. Could I? Can jump? Ah, oh, another, another flare. Could I break through here? Doesn't seem like it, but perhaps I can see it's on the other side. I don't think I'm. Perhaps there's another way to access... Oh, there we go. Old as they are, they won't pull off with my bare hands. Perhaps I can just... Give it a few swings. This hole's been boarded up a long time ago. The wood looks pretty soft by now. So either... A couple of hits should break it or thought I heard something back there actually if I'm going in a hole it'd be better that I have an actual weapon with me like I said, I'm not sure how good am I going to be with a weapon, but at least I have one. What the hell is that? Okay, so this is... Alright, so they are both and they lead me to the, to the same place. Hatch is seriously solid, it won't open by hand. Someone obviously wanted Someone obviously wanted to keep people out or in. I see what was unsafe. This looks like some kind of industrial mechanism, although there's a hole in the center and no way to operate it. Okay. I can't see some, it's not like I can't see anything. Can I use this now? The only problem that I'm going to say... Is that normally I make the videos at daytime. 
and I feel like if I were playing in a completely dark room, I could see a lot better when my torch is out. Ah, don't tell me. Don't tell me that this game deals with insanity as well. <laughs> Whatever I was descending into, it was a hundred it was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches located in a remote in a remote Arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a network of safe, safety nets emergency services at the end of a phone line, health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers, all there. If something goes wrong, part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school, surrounded by a closing ring of older kids, knowing anyone that might help me friends, parents, teachers, were too scared, or too far away. Jotted down a note, just in case. The entrance to the cave has caved in. There must be another way out. There could be anything living down here. Heroics are for Hollywood actors and fairy tales. I'm not taking any chances. If I face off against anything down here, I won't last a second. Caution and stealth are my only defense now. If anyone or anything hears me, I'd, I'd be best of staying low and out of sight until I know whether or not it's a threat. Crouching by pressing uh, your right left control will give me the chance to hide in the shadows. I'll know if I got it right because of the blue tint to my vision. Plus, I should be quiet enough that I won't be hurt unless something's right on top of me. Better remember to shut off any light sources, though. My best bet is to hide for a couple of seconds or so, perfectly still. That'll make me properly hidden. Okay, so when there's the blue tint, that means I'm hidden, hidden. I did hear, did hear something, and I remember there being dogs or monsters that look like dogs. I can't see anything here. All right. I actually see better when I'm hiding. So this is my location. Exit. I'm right there on the circle. So if I go to the left, there's an office. If I go to the right, there's in the storage. Perhaps the storage. I can find something useful. But as heavy as it looks, still, it should serve as some form of weapon if I have to defend myself. What, this? Okay. Yeah, actually hiding, you can see. Wait, is that storage room? I gotta say, I thought, I thought the storage room was a little bit closer. A lot of useless junk and best it could be a decent hiding spot. Storage room. Not sure if I'm seeing a month. Is that a stone? No, it's just a pillar. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was seeing. Okay, so this is the storage room. Oh, 
Alright. Well, that's... No, that's just... That's just me walking. I thought I heard something, but it was... A pair of shoes. I'm definitely hearing something. I don't know if it's a dog or a person. What's that? If this lighter wasn't empty, it'd be it'd be a handy thing to have. What's this? This shows some kind of trapdoor, but I can't see where it where it would be. Hell is that nice? It looks like spiders. Okay. I can move this around. Don't know if there's anything. Oh, okay, there are, is there anything inside? Just a few rocks. Actually, before we do that... Let's just hide. Lock the door behind me. Wouldn't want anything to sneak up. Bite me. What's this? Pool. Not sure if maybe it's food. Anyways, painkillers. More batteries. Ugh. What the hell? What just happened? I don't know if that was so. If that was such a good idea. I heard some voices, but... I may never get used to that. Alright, I'm not sure what... I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, sneaking is definitely the... the way, I think, to... To save a little bit of battery. Where is that? Did the battery got added on its own? I think it might have. Yeah, I think it might have. It's locked. Yeah, I'm behind it I can hear something. I can hear something behind this as well. Locked from the other side. That... Does that mean there's someone still inside? I can hear chattering. Thank God, may, um, maybe I can read it back. There's a locked door with odd noises coming from behind, from behind it in the storage. Notes. I wish... Mm, guess I'm, uh, I'm a little bit... Slow when it comes to reading. Like, I will be able to read it a lot quicker for myself, but I'm slow when it comes to reading out loud. Wait, there's a light here. Can I use it? No. So I came from here. But this seems like, yeah, this locked door. Oh god, is there something else on here? I can't just wait here for whatever's around the corner. I need to hide. Oh motherfucker. Jesus, I've never been this scared in my life. I can feel my heart racing. If anything if anything gets within more than a few feet of my hiding spot, I better not stare it out. Anything within my field of vision might panic me and then I'm a goner. Am 
I supposed to go? That thing is still there? No, I can't see it anymore. But yeah, I did remember, right? There are dogs or wolves or... I don't know. Okay, if I remember the map. Oh, no, 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 no. Which way is he gonna come? I think he's coming from that way. I really hope that he's going over there. Can't see it anymore. Wow. Yeah, because I'm actually not sure how well the hammer will do against one of those things. Or if it's even supposed to be used as a weapon. Alright, the office is to the left. To the left. Hugging the wall. Can't see any. This is the right way, isn't it? Oh, what was that? I think it might be on the other side. Office. Right, I'm hoping that. Inside the office, I'm gonna be more or less... Oh, there's light. Awesome. Hoping that I'm gonna be more or less safe in here. So much history in this place. Tied up in words and left to decompose. Anything in here? Nothing in there. Nothing here either. And nothing here either. Officer's Lock. 15 August 1945. Common Bunker. Emergency Air Airstrip Zulu. Weekly report. But isn't 1945 when the Second World War ended? Might be wrong there, but I, I think it is. Another unremarkable week in Greenland. Regular supply shipment received. Standard emerg emergency drills carried out. Routine runaway maintenance completed. I have ordered maintenance be carried out twice weekly from here on in, due to increased snowfall. One wounded. The one wounded figure is no cause for concern back in London. Germans haven't, ex haven't extended their front line by 4,000 miles. Two of my men were caught manufacturing cherry bombs in our workshop armory and succeeded in blowing off a couple of fingers. I take partial responsibility for this in that, in that I allowed them access to the demolitions manual we keep in the storeroom. And I'm sure that I'm sure that's where they learned the ingredients. As a precautionary measure, I have now locked up that manual in the chest in my office. And I will keep the key on my person at all times. Needless to say, both, my, both men have been disciplined, and the injured man has been sent home for medical care. I cannot help but think that a more suitable punishment would have been for him to stay out, out here. But the matter is out of my hands. This base is so disconnected, sometimes I feel as if this war could end, and we might not even hear about it out here. Supplies requisition order. Dynamite for excavation purposes. Seven bayonets. Not necessary in my opinion, but procedure states we should have a full complement. When industrial ice pick for removing the for removing the damn ice that forms on the external hatch. One pair of reading glasses, category 7C, an order for myself. My glasses are in rather a poor state of repair and could do with some replacing. 
could do with replacing. Reconditioning of the mine continues to progress. The structure is being fortified from, poten from potential bomb damage and excavation of previously caved in air. Uh, sorry, I'll restart. The stru structure is being fortified from potential bomb damage and excavation of previously caved in areas is going ahead. One point of curiosity is some kind of archaeological find. An artifact buried in the earth, discovered by one of the work teams. Later this evening, after martial duty, I shall take a closer look at the artifact. It appears to be man-made, and may have working parts inside. I shall remove what looks like the front cover, and see if I can't discover the source of the light which constantly emanates from it. Chief MCO M. Major. Yeah, this is... what's this? Packstring. Not sure where packstring is. Probably a... a chemical component or, or something. A man. An old man clutching something unseen. He's a strange and yet he's no stranger. Never seen before. Still, I know this man before, before me is Howard. I call him Father. Okay, I think I might have to click to continue. It was different, but the same. That time, like, I had more control. But over what? Now, I'm sure I'll have to go back... ...to the storeroom, so I'll try interacting with that thing in the storeroom as well and see if now I can discover anything else from there. This must be the key that was mentioned in the in the diary. Copenhagen Post, Monday 17th August 1930. So this is 15 years before. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of death mine. Researchers at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that mind-altering chemicals naturally sewn into the rock may be the cause of high suicide rates at a Greenland, Greenland mine. The university, which has recently been conducting studies into isolated communities, first became interested in the workers of the northwestern lead mine last year. They discovered that even taking into account Greenland's naturally high, higher suicide, suicide rate, Local figures for the last 100 years were abnormally high, at 46 deaths per 100,000 populace, compared to the national average of 29. Yeah, that's a lot. In further investigation, experts diagnosed in many of the minors symptoms in common with the earlier stages of paranoid schizophrenia. This has prompted researchers to hypothesize Natural deposit of lysergic acid, a pH 4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic properties, may be present in the rocks. Few locals were conductive to interview. Those who agreed to speak had the wrong explanation. Inuit spirits, known as the Turnguide. Turnguide, I. Yeah, I'll go with Turnguide. Live, at, live in the mountains. The university is awaiting the results of chemical testing. That is to continue. So I am... At a, I am in that mine, I suppose. Which later on was occupied by the British army. Yeah. It was, right? It, it did mention London. Don't want to say something stupid. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I... I'm pretty sure that I read somewhere that it mentioned London. Yeah, and it's... It's a picture of a British platoon. It must date back to 
World War II. I suppose this mine was converted into some kind of bunker. Uh, well, reading this will have dispelled all my <laughs> all my thinking what it could have been. More batteries. Anything else here? The miracle that these batteries are even working. But I'm not gonna question my luck. If this battery's been here from when the British platoon was here. Floating wooden shells must be the added moisture from that grate. This whole room is putrefying. And yeah, batteries seem to add themselves on their own. They don't seem to add a whole lot, so... It could be... That, sure, the batteries are working, but they don't have that much power left in them, because they are so old. That painkillers. Anything else? Dried meat. Beef jerky. Beef jerky, not without aroma. So I'm thinking here... Painkillers are most likely to heal me. I'm going to guess that the beef jerky might. Big Book of Explosives, 1923 edition. Chapter 1.3 Black Match Fuse. The Black Match Fuse is one of the oldest, simple, simplest, and most reliable fuses used in modern pyro pyrotechnics. It is easy to create, essentially consisting of just string of string and gunpowder, but be warned, the chemicals concerned will stain clothing, and as always, due concern is advised. Materials require string, preferably cotton, black gunpowder and backstring. So I do have the backstring. I will need a string and black gunpowder to create this uh, explosive. The string should be coated with a thin layer of backstring, which acts as an adhesive. The string is then carefully rolled into the gunpowder and left to dry at least a couple of minutes before use. Chapter 2.1 Dynamite Invented by Al Alfred Noble in 1866, dynamite is commonly used in construction, mining and demolition. It has proven far safer to handle than alternatives such as a pure nitroglycerin provide. Um, has proved far safer to handle than alternatives such as pure nitroglycerin, provided, that is, it has been properly stored. Over time, the explosive components of dynamite, supposedly made safe by the presence of, of the di, diatomaceous earth, has a tendency to weep, making an old box of the explosive liable to detonate on contact. Materials required, one part of diatomaceous earth, three parts of nitroglycerin, small amount of sodium carbonate, text unreadable, then simply form into short sticks and wrapping paper. Chapter 2.3, Trinitrotoluene, or TNT for short. TNT was first discovered in 1863 by German chemist Joseph Wilbrandt. But it took some years before it yielded its true potential. This was because of the difficulty of making it explode and the lesser detonation in comparison to dynamite. The main advantage was discovered by the German Navy, who, who employed TNT relative explosives stability in order to cause massive damage to British warships. Their to torpedoes could be detonated inside the ship's armor, rather than imploding on contact as did other shells. Chapter 2.6 Armstrong's Mixture Arms Armstrong's Mixture is included in this book as more of a point of interest than a viable chemical mix. The formula exists as somewhat of a legend in modern pyrotechnics referenced by those uh, uh, sorry 
The formula exists as somewhat of a legend in modern pyrotechnics, referenced by those knowledgeable enough to stay away from it as death mix. It's incredible its incredible volatility make it unsuitable for almost all potential applications. Materials require red phosphorus and barium. This mixture can be carefully and slowly mixed to minimize risk to the chemist. Sulfur can substitute for some or all of the barium to slightly decrease sensitivity. So now I know how to make explosives. And I was, as I was thinking, the the beef jerky is probably. Because I'm, I'm not sure if I finish that sentence. It's probably going to use be used as bait. Maybe to get the wolves or dogs out of my out of my bag. I think I'm gonna be discover. This typewriter dates back even further than the war, made in Germany in 1923. The Empire type typewriter. Can I... there's nothing. Alright, well, I think it's going to be fitting for the first video to leave it here. Light, I miss being outside already. This place is starting to get to me. But even if I could reach the grate, it looks built into the rock itself. No way it's coming to, it's coming loose. I think it's fitting to leave it here, maybe sitting on this chair with the light shining down on us. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and if you have, you can like, subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications on the next one. And I'm looking forward to be doing a full playthrough of this, uh, of this game. Looks interesting and I'm really liking it. And I can. How can I save the game? Hmm, not sure, maybe it's safe on its own. But, anyways, <laughs> hope you liked the video and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.